Okay, today I want to talk about the Daniel's book. Now, if we read in the, the book of Daniel, we read about a book that Daniel had, and, and he was told to seal it up. Let's see if I got my pages stuck here. It's talking about here. It says, uh, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words that and seal the book. Even to the time of the end, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And it says, uh, and uh, I was just reading in uh, Daniel 12, 4, and Daniel 12, 5, it says, Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood uh, a two, uh, stood other two, and one on this side, and one uh, on the bank of the river, and the other on the other side of the bank of the river, and on, the, and on one side, to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the rivers, how long shall it be, how long shall it be till the end of these wonders? Now, Daniel's asking them a question. How long shall it be till the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand uh, and his left hand unto heaven, and swore by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Now, time, times, and a half is three and a half years. Of course, I believe the tribulation is seven years, and uh, it'll be split into two. The uh, son of perdition, the man, they will be given power by the devil himself, which is the dragon. And I, I believe that he will die with a deadly wound, and three and a half days after he dies, he will come back to life. Being the son of perdition, the devil incarnate will then start, that's when the bar, mark of the beast begins, and that's when the the, the wrath uh, uh, begins. And, it, and I'll explain that here in just a minute as well. In verse 8, And I heard, but I understood not, as uh, Daniel speaking, Then said I, Lo, my Lord, which be the end of thy time, of, of these things. He said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Okay, now, what is this book that we're talking about? When will this book be opened? Has it been opened yet? And what's in this book? And why did Daniel have to seal it? It says, But, uh, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, of, words and seal the book. Well, I'd like to know what's in the book. Well, you can find out because, well, that book is, is has it been opened yet? But in John's vision in Revelation, it was opened. Okay, if we look here at Revelation chapter 5, we see the book open. And it says uh, in chapter 5, 1, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, and of course that's Jesus Christ, a book written um, book written within on the back side, seals with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming it with a loud voice, who was worthy to open the book and to loosen the seals thereof. Now, mind you, these got seals because Daniel was told to seal the book. And this is the book that Daniel sealed. And three, it says, And no man in heaven, nor in on earth, nor under the earth, was able to open a book, neither to look thereon. And, and um, John says, And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah... The root of David have prevailed to open a book and to loosen the seven seals thereof. Okay, now, who's going to open a book? Who's worthy? Jesus Christ is the worthy one that is able to open the book. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to scoot down and we're going to see some things that's going to happen. I'll just be explaining a lot. If not, it would take me two hours to make the video and things like that. When it's going to open up seals, it says, and uh, we're going to start in chapter 6 because Jesus is opening these seals. And it says, and Daniel says, let's go back to Daniel, because he says, when will these things happen? And because um, the Lord said to Daniel, what was told to Daniel, that uh, they will be sealed until the time of the end. And uh, here we go. The time of the end, we see this. Here we go again. Um and it says, But thou, O Daniel, this is 12.4, uh, book of Daniel. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the, the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. It's talking again. It'll be till the, till the end. In verse 9, and he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Well, when's the end? Well, the time of the end is tribulation. 
And this is the time after the rapture. This is the time when, uh, of course, John is uh, having his vision. He, you know, he opened up the door into heaven and walked through this, as it so shows in uh, early book of Revelation. And, it, and they're opening the seals, and we're seeing what happened. And it says uh, in uh, Revelation 6, uh, verse 1, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now, one of the four beasts is one of the, those are, they're good beasts. They're not like the, you know, like the beast, the devil. Those are different. These are like creatures God created to worship him. And they sit around the throne. That's the kind of beast they're talking about. And it says, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him had a bow and a crown, and was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Some people strangely get this mixed up. This it says, uh, and I saw, in a, okay, and I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him, a white horse. This is not Jesus Christ, not yet. Yes, Jesus Christ will return on a white horse with many crowns upon his head, with robes dipped in blood, and that's going to be at the end. That's how. That's what will end Armageddon. That's well, Armageddon is when he returns. That will, will end tribulation. This is the we're reading now in the early parts of tribulation. It says, and I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it, uh, upon it with a bow and a crown, was given to him, and he went forth conquering, uh, conquering, and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, "Come and see." Now this is another beast. Now we want to jump back. We see who is the person on this white horse when the seal is broken. That's the Antichrist, the man of sin. That's what we're talking about. It wasn't Jesus. Jesus didn't come back. It says he had a crown on his head. When Jesus returns, it said Jesus has many crowns upon his head. See, the devil always tries to, to, to mimic Jesus as much as possible. And that was the first seal. The seal of what? The seal of Daniel's book, which Jesus is opening in, in, here in Revelation chapter 6. And it says, There went out another horse that was red. The power was given to him that he sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Now, if we see this, we can hear about this in Matthew chapter 24, verse uh, 6 and 7. It, uh, Jesus talks about this. And I did a video recently about how much Jesus actually gives so much detailed stuff about future events. It's shocking what Jesus revealed to, to everybody. In 24, 6 through 7, it's talking about the same thing. It says, The horse that was red and the power was given to him that sat thereon, to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened, okay, we're going to jump, jump into the third one here in a second. Now, Matthew 24, 6 and 7, it says, Jesus said, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, we see earthquakes, and that's when, the, when we see here. It's talking about thunderings and things like that. We can understand how that works. It's interesting here as well. We see uh, there was a, a noise. Let's go back to six one. It says, "And I saw there was the lamp uh, open one of the, the seals. The lamp, of course, is Jesus. And and I heard as it were the noise of thunder and one of the four beasts saying, "Come and look." And it says, and it says, "I saw and behold a white horse, and he is set upon him again." That's the Antichrist. And we can prove that because Jesus Christ Himself said this. Um, let me try to think of the verse. Uh, actually, it's funny because Jesus said he saw the devil fall from heaven like thunder and like lightning. I'm pretty sure that was in Mark because what had happened is Jesus set out his, set out his disciples and gave them uh, ability to give miracles. And they come back saying, Lord, even demons obeyed us. And Jesus like, yeah. And he says, I even saw the devil fall from, uh, fall from heaven like the thunder. And I wish I could find that verse because I just thought of it on top of my head while I was talking. And you can see how that happens. But we see also in uh, 5, And when he opened the third seal and uh, heard the third beast say, Come and see, and beheld a black horse, and he that sat upon him had uh, a pair of uh, uh, balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the and the wine. Well, let's go back to Matthew 7 again. I was in Mark at that point. In Matthew 7, uh, 24, 7, excuse me, 24, 7, 
again, it says, uh, it says, pestilence, diverse, and earthquakes, and diverse men are all these are the beginning of the sor sorrows. It says, then shall he deliver up and, and be afflicted, and shall kill you, and uh, shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Well, it's saying, that they'll, you know, the, the red horse will be peace from the earth, and they shall kill one another. Okay, now we, we see here in verse uh, 7, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of four beasts saying, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, which his name, is, uh, his name that sat upon him was death. Now, it's funny. The fourth seal, you get the name. Uh, the, the first three seals the, on the horse, but you didn't get the name. But the fourth seal, you get a name. His name is death. Uh, death and hell. Well, his name is death and hell. And followed him, and power was given unto him over the, four, um, the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. And when the, when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, the holy and true, does thou have not judgment and avenge our blood of them that dwell on the earth? Now, we're talking here the martyred saints at this point. It says, and, uh, and white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren shall be killed, and they were they should be fulfilled. That's talking about the martyred states that lose their head because they refuse the mark of the beast. Now later, of course, all, just a side note, later in chapter 7 we're going to find out there's another group of people that aren't the martyrs. They're another group. It says, and after this will be holy and low a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations, of kindred and people and tongues, stand before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with um, white robes and palms in their hands. And they cry with a loud voice, uh, saying, Salvation to our Lord, which uh, sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. It's talking, it's, it's uh, because he, John's seeing this, and uh, an angel says, and I uh, saw low, and it says, oh, excuse me, not an angel, one of the elders answered and saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence they came? And it says, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are which came out of the great tribulation, have washed their robes, and made them uh, white in the blood of the Lamb. There are they before the throne, and serve him day and night. Who serve him, who Jesus, day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth upon the throne shall dwell among them. It says, They shall hunger no more. Uh, neither shall they thirst any longer, and there should be uh, neither shall be uh, sunlight on them nor any heat. Of course, in that time, there's going to be heat. There's going to be famine, as we see here in Revelation, when he's opening these seals. And as we go through now, when these seals open, we'll just go ahead and skip through. When these seals open, what's in the book? The book is telling you the Antichrist, the beast, is telling you about the woman uh, that sits upon the beast with seven heads and ten horns, and explains what these are. That's what's inside the book of Daniel. Of course, if you read Revelation, I did a verse by verse through Revelation several months ago. It's on this channel if you want to check it out. But I'm always adding to uh, Revelation all the time, too, because I'm learning. I'm always learning every day as well. And it's, it's talking about what's going to happen. So if you're reading through Daniel, like, when is this book going to be open? Well, it's not technically open yet because John went into the future. And he saw things in the future in his vision. He started writing everything down. So we have the book of Revelation today. But it has not happened yet. After the rapture, the Lord will then go and uh, open that book, open the seals. And he will start, uh, start wreaking havoc on the planet. I truly, completely believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And I know for a fact there's a pre-tribulation rapture because the King James Bible tells it definitively in things. So... That's what's going on with uh, with Daniel's book. And you could say, why would Daniel have to have that sealed up if we know that now? Well, because of the fact that when the seals are broken, things are happening on earth. These horrible things. So if, if, if Daniel sealed it and Jesus opened it up, you know, two weeks later, well, he'd be breaking these seals. And there's all these horrible things would happen on the earth then. So it couldn't happen. It had to happen at the exact moment that the Lord chose it to be. This book cannot be unsealed until tribulation because that is when these things are to come to pass. And it's amazing how much uh, Revelation lines up with Daniel, excuse me, with Matthew. And I've mentioned uh, videos about that because if you read Matthew 24 and rightly divide it, 
you'll understand that Jesus is talking to Jews how to live through tribulation and what to do. Matthew 24 lines up perfectly with Mark 13. It lines up well with uh, Luke 21 because there's three different people telling the three different stories. Now, of course, John, I'll get into John later, uh, another video about that stuff. But when it comes down to it, if you look, I don't think you can see this. Look how much, I got so much stuff written in the side of these because it lines up perfectly. How it lines up with tribulation. And it cannot be coincidental at how these things line up. And things. So you have, Daniel's book would then be opened and you would see all this stuff. Now Lord, the Lord gives you every single chance to get saved. And if you don't get saved, God forbid you don't get saved. That's that's not a good way to go. But you do have some insight. If you, excuse my language, if you're stupid enough to go through tribulation, you literally have a free ticket out. Just believe. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know that I preach the gospel every time. Of course. But we have to be careful because tribulation will be, as Daniel said, as Jesus said, this will be the worst time the world will have ever seen ever is the time of tribulation. So you have to be careful. Of course, how do you get saved? It's a shock how many people go to church and they've not heard the gospel. I went to church since I was a little kid, I hear all the time. Never heard the gospel. You know what the gospel is? If you go to church, ask your preacher what the gospel is. You'd be surprised that they'll give you a false way of salvation. It's a shame. If they do got the gospel, then amen. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. It says, Moreover, brother, I declare unto you the gospel, which I, uh, which I preach unto you, and which also you received, and where you stand. By which also you are saved, see, so you're saved, if you keep in memory of what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and he was rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. It's the faith in how Christ died. How did Jesus Christ die for your sins? It says, I also received how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. How did he die for your sins? He died spilling his blood for your sins. Jesus can die, just like anybody else. He was in a human body, but he died for your sins. And able to die for your sins means he had to make a blood sacrifice. If we go over to one of the greatest verses in the entire Bible, is uh, Romans 3.25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. The propitiation means the actual act of appeasing wrath of God through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness through the, through the mission of the, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Forbearance means patience. So uh, we see here, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Faith in his blood. It's all about the blood. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, justified by faith. Let's look again at 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by faith. His blood. Whose blood? Jesus' blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. What's wrath? Wrath is hell. The actual definition of hell is the wrath of God. And there's no way to escape it unless you get saved. And there's different ways to get saved in the Bible. Sure, but there's only one way to get saved at a time. And we're under today, we're under the ministry of Paul. Because Paul said to us in 11.13, in Romans 11.13, excuse me, that's 13. 11.13 we read, For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Gentiles, well I'm a Gentile. You know I'm a Jew today. Once they get saved, they believe in Jesus. They have to come through the same gospel. There's no different gospel today, but I think the gospel again will change. And tribulation is going to be works. There's no works today. You just have faith in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. You have faith that he died and rose again the third day for you. It's the blood atonement. If there's no bloodshed, there's no forgiveness of sins. And that's clearly shown in the scriptures in uh, Hebrews 9.22. Um, it says there's no remission. Uh, there is a forgiveness of sins only through the blood. Let me see here. Hebrews 9.22. It says, In almost all things are by the, are, are by the law purged with blood, and without the, uh, the shedding of blood is no remission. It's completely all about the blood atonement. He died and rose again the third day. That's what it's all about. I have so many videos just explaining this. It's amazing how people say, Oh, I saw your videos. and Oh, great, did you get saved? 
yeah, uh, I'm going to get water baptized and have my sins washed away with the water. I'm like, are you kidding me? Just listen, read your Bible. If you read what we're supposed to read today for our our, our doctrine for today, uh, for Gentiles, from the book of Romans through Philemon, is for us, speaking to us for today. And there's no way you can look through that and not see the blood atonement for salvation and the faith and the no works. People just get so mixed up. It's so sad just to see people just start paying attention. And they're not taking, you know, they're not doing reading their Bible every day. 2 uh, 8 Ephesians, for by grace you are saved through faith. It is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, that's not anything should boast, not of works. Anything that you think you can do to be saved is a work. You can't get water baptized for salvation. You can't call upon the name of the Lord for salvation. And by the way, uh, Romans uh, 10, 13 is not a way of salvation. It is for the Jews, because you can see it in different verses. I've done several, several videos about the confusion of Romans 10, 13. People on YouTube saying, Romans 10, 13, call upon the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. You can't be saved that way. You have to trust in the blood atonement. You have to see the context where Paul is talking about in 10.1, Brother, my heart, uh, desire, and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. It's 10.13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But if you read the entire verse, it talks about if you've got to hear the gospel, understand, and then believe. Yeah, Isaiah was saying that. Clear in the book of Isaiah. It says, but they have not obeyed the, the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How, how you got, let's talk about the gospel. You can't be saved unless you hear the gospel, have it explained to you where you can understand the gospel, and then you believe what the gospel says. It's the blood atonement, the death and resurrection. However, if you want to go through, go through tribulation, I would rather you didn't. I'm not going through tribulation. My wife's not going through tribulation because we got saved. I, if anything I ever do in this world, I want people to get saved. I love preaching the, the gospel. I love teaching the Bible. I love learning scripture and sharing it with others. But if you're just going to be like, oh, whatever, then whatever. You know what I mean? You don't know if you've got 30 years left. You don't know if you've got two minutes left. We don't know how much time we have. We could drop dead right here, God forbid. We don't know. We don't know the exact moment of the rapture, but we know it's going to be very soon. I don't know. The rapture could be today. It could be in 10 years. It could be in 100 years. I don't know. But I do believe the rapture is soon. And you would love, I guarantee you, I'm sure you'd like to go to rapture. So I'm going. I'd like you all to go to. Please share this video if you can. Tell others. Uh, I'm always doing videos about YouTube. You know, on YouTube, I'm trying to get my Rumble. Uh, I have trouble uploading videos to Rumble. I have like three videos on. I'm trying to upload more. So check that out too. And I'll talk to you later.